I'm here with Dan Payne from Dan's NRL Collectibles. Welcome, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. No worries. Now, we've done Dan before for a bit of a chat, but a lot of you wouldn't have seen that. So just tell us about your story. Um, yeah, well, I've been a mad, passionate rugby league supporter all my life. I've uh, started a store, online store called Dan's NRL Collectibles. I published a few books. Uh, first books were um, the history of rugby league footy cards. And then I've since moved on more recently to um, doing these Heroes of Yesterday yeah. books. I've, uh, I've published three of those. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, and they're just, uh, I, I get down and um, interview a lot of the old rugby league players and a lot of these guys were my childhood heroes. And then I've got, got the opportunity to sit down and hear their whole life story. So for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. You know, I feel very privileged that, to get the, get the opportunity to be able to um, pass on, you know, all these legends' stories. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, and the reason I know, Dan, is because I'm in book three. <laughs> Um, there I am on the back there. I don't know if you can see there. there. And, you know, I think I, I, I used up a bit more than my allotted time and we had a <laughs> chance. <That was, laughs> couldn't shut me up. But, uh, there was uh, a lot to tell and there was a lot to take in and it was a, it was a fantastic story. And, uh, you know, and everyone remembers Steve Maven's story from um, especially in the semi-final and, and the circumstances with that and ending up in the Cauliflower Hotel and, and it was really good to get your side of the story, and yeah, it was just a, just an amazing story, and that's a that moment will live on in rugby league history forever. That so did. yeah, it was yeah. Um, great to get the story inside from you, mate. It was infamous. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to know the story, it's in the book. <laughs> um, now we're going to give away some books. So you've got just let us know what we've got to give away. Yeah, so a set of. Um, well, basically, the, the Rugby League Card Bible. Yep. Uh, I've got book two and book three of Rugby League's Heroes of Yesterday. Perfect. Now, this is a good one. Uh, this, is, this has got all the, all the old footy cards in it and the, and the years. And so it's a really nice collector's item. And you could, if you wanted to, you could start collecting autographs. Like if you see Joey Johns's catch up with him, if he lets you, get, he'll sign your book and you can do that sort of stuff or whatever. Or just and speaking have it. of signing, there's a couple of footy cards. There's a special footy card in there of you, maybe, that the winner will get. Oh, there and you go. And you can probably sign it for them. Oh, well, there you go. Let's, uh, let's put them up. There's, well, I'll put them on the screen. I'm, I'm just showing them now. You might yep. be able to see them, but I will put them on the screen later so you can see. But yeah, all right. Some signed Steve Maven footy cards as well. And that's a special edition one that Dan actually made for his book. So I appreciate that, mate. So yeah. I only had two footy cards and now I've got three thanks to you. No problem. So to win these books, wherever you're watching this, leave a comment and I'll put all the comments into a barrel and pick one out and the prize will be yours. You have featured a lot of Rabbitohs. This is Bunnies TV and welcome to everyone who's watching this. We're going to just talk about a few of the Rabbitohs that have been featured in the books and a couple of the stories they told you. Well, the Rabbitohs... South Sydney, there's so many characters and it's really right up my alley to some of the stories I've heard from the guys and, you know, there's a, things like Paul Stringer, he's uh, just him being on stage three times now with Jimmy Barnes singing um, k San, or if that's the right one, but... Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that's a real... Three times, not just the once. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Barnes actually remembers him because he's got up and right. hugs him and he's a big man stringer, so... Yep, he is. he is. Former Rabbitoh. Yeah, I did his interview up at his house. Uh, excellent bloke. Then he's ended up, um, my outdoor entertainment area is uh, built by Paul Stringer, actually. So Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Gee. And, uh, you know, other guys like Bill Annabelle, I met him up on the Gold Coast. And he's, he's a really nice bloke, but very tough front row back in the day. And one thing I remember about him, he brought out his scrapbook and was really proud to, to show that he's he had his penalty notice for fighting. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from the the referee send off, and he had to face the I don't know if it was ju judiciary back then, but unreal. Yeah, but he's very proud of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, back in the day, that was sort of like a badge of honour having a, having a knuckle, wasn't it? And getting, well, especially getting... South Sydney front rowers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, um, yeah. David Sinclair, he he just told me what it meant to be a rabbito, and one of the proudest moments of his life, and still is. So, you know, it's very. South Sydney's one of those clubs where there's a lot of passion and a lot of history in the club. And it's it's just a, just a, amazing that that still is the way, you know, it's it's the way and the 
they were nearly out of the competition at one stage. And well, we were out. But <laughs> yeah, and then the the passion and the the drive from people and the the people of South Sydney have, is what's got them back. Yeah, people power. Yeah, and some of the other guys I've interviewed uh, South Sydney players, Gary Wright, and he told me about when they did a visit to a prison and played a game against a prison side, and that was quite interesting. And one of the guys that they were talking to, the guards come up to him later and said, oh, what are you doing talking to him? He's like a like a really bad mass murderer. And um, he, he nearly, um, he went crazy in the in the prison yard recently as well. So, hey. yeah, like, that, I can't imagine South or any team sending the, sending their players into the prison at these this no. day and age. No, Gary Wright, he's been in the studio for a chat and he's one of the nice guys of rugby league, a champion guy. He plays a bit of golf and yeah. he's always at our former players stuff because he's, uh, I think he's retired now. And yeah, but yeah, he's in good nick too. He's in, just such a nice bloke. Yeah. And Barry, Barry Wood was another nice bloke. You know, I distinctly remember his, um, his interview. We had it got along really well and he's quite a colorful character. And, mm. and actually my son's just joined the army as an officer. He's in training now. And, and, uh, I reached out to uh, Barry Wood because, you know, he's good friends with Johnny Lewis and the boxing and everything. And my son said he was a bit worried about fighting, joining the army. He wanted to just be able to defend himself. And Barry put him on the Garth Wood and uh, did a bit of training with him at, at cool. Bondi Boxing. And, yeah, that's, that really helped him out, gave him a little bit of confidence and, and stuff before joining the army. Right. Well, Garth and Nat both... Played NRL and tough as they come, those two boys. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, uh, well, that was good. And uh, Garth actually not, uh, beat Mundine too, didn't he? Yeah, he did on the contender. That was um, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the prize to win a, a challenge against Mundine, and he he beat him. So yeah, Chuck found out how tough Garth was too in that <laughs> in that instance. But um, yeah, and he, he's one of the greats, Chuck too. Like he, he could box too. So there you go. I'll say yeah. So your son's. Join the army. That's a proud moment for the family. I see you put a couple of photos up and that on Facebook. Yeah, very proud. Um, 18, very young. Uh, yeah, so in his class, we got to speak to him on Sunday. He's only been in a week. But most most of the people in there are around 24, 25. So there were three 18-year-olds in the, I think, 28 um, group in the class. And, yeah, so... Yeah, he's quite young, but I think it's good because the yeah. army can mould him into yeah. exactly how they want him. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, well, hopefully, you know, he, he never gets in any hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if he does, he he might go all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, probably one of my favourite rabbitos I've been interviewed is um, had him over for a barbecue, actually, at my house, was Ross Harrington, uh, ex-copper. And the story that sticks out with me, was that I don't I've never heard this from anyone else before, but at half time he's come off and had two schooners of beer while he's in the sin bin and then he's gone back on and finished the game. I just I thought that was just terrific, but <laughs> that doesn't sound like Roscoe. Uh, does it? A, <laughs> no, it actually does, yeah. Yeah, no, he's well, me and Roscoe played on the same side in first grade and we've got that special bond that not many people have got and I uh, I love the bloke. He's he's a champion, and yeah, yeah, he's he's got some good stories, and you know that's just one of them. Yeah, no, it's, it's just like just a real honour to be able to interview these um, South Sydney players, plus legends of the game from all all the clubs, and being able to deliver it in a book, and that way the stories live on forever, and they don't just die when when people do eventually pass away. Yeah, yeah. So how's business? How how are the cards? The uh, is it is it a valuable thing? Because I know I spoke to a guy called Mark Emery, who I've called the interview the collector, and he's he collects a lot of stuff off eBay, and yeah. some old, real valuable stuff, and some of it's quite expensive. Yeah, there are some expensive cards. Uh, my shop, you know, I have all the footy cards in there, Scanlon's ones, seventies, eighties, and uh, I do the big leagues and rugby league weeks as well. But we're talking about value of cards. There's some sets of a lot more valuable than others, like 1963. Talking to one or two thousand dollars a card. Wow! But it's still small money compared to the American market, where yep. you're talking one or two million dollars for some cards. So, yeah. but yeah, it's but it's more um the thing about footy cards, especially guys our our age, you know, probably our early forties. 
we always go back and look at a card from the 80s and it just brings back memories. It does. It, it, you can, the amount of times I've heard people say they can still smell the bubble gum and yeah. things like that. And that's, that's what's good about collecting is um, it just takes you back to when you were young and, mm. yeah. And it's, it's true. And I, I, it's exactly what, when you said that, I thought the same thing. I mean, I used to go up, get some money off mum and go up the, the corner shop and, Get them, and you'd be excited to see who you got. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you'd get it one you haven't got, and you'd be that wrapped, or you'd get the same ones, and you go, "Oh, I'll have to go again." And but yeah, it, it's it's you know, and they were simple designs back then. Like look at mm. this, you know, like it's just a simple design, a border yeah. around, and a picture of the guy, yeah, in his jumper, yeah. And you know, and, and they, you turn it over, and it tells us a bit of a story often That's about right. them or, yep. or whatever. And um, and then the different years, the different patterns and designs are always quite interesting. And you know, I know I've shared a few of them on my pages and that, and it's. It's great. Is there some cards like uh, that are really iconic or that are more popular? You know, maybe an Artie Beetson or something like that. Yeah, well, Artie Beetson. There's the Belmain one, 1969 pop-up card. That's a, that's quite a special card. It's that would be on the higher end because um, kids in those days would have popped the card. Right. So to find an unpopped card, they're they're very rare and uh, expensive. Oh gee, okay. One of the greats, Artie. It's a sad loss. It, but uh, yeah, I did. I did get to know him, and he was a, a real gentleman, good yeah. bloke. Yeah, and uh, South Sydney also had a card set. I think it was two thousand six from uh, Real Insurance, and the common set was quite easy to get, but they made one card really hard to get. You had to sign up with Real Insurance to get the card. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, marketing. Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, mate. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, we'll drop back in again for another interview uh, down the track. Appreciate your time. No, thanks for having me, Mavo. Really appreciate it. <laughs>